If you would like my dad's videos, please subscribe to QA Insights channel. Welcome to Learn Jmeter series. In this season 3 episode 1, we are going to see about inter-thread communication in Jmeter. By default, Jmeter thread groups doesn't talk to each other. But there are certain use cases where you have to enable the communication between two thread groups or multiple thread groups. So that is where you have to enable the communication by leveraging the Jmeter plugin because there is no out of the box support in Jmeter. You can download this plugin inter thread communication from Jmeter plugins.org or you can leverage the plugins manager. So how it works? So basically it implements first in first out mechanism. Assume that you are in a queue to get a ticket. So whoever goes first, they will be able to get the ticket. The same analogy applies in Jmeter third group communication. So here we have a black box, some kind of processor, and we have three elements, yellow, green, and blue. And whatever goes inside, it will get processed and then it will give you the output. So in this case, the first one is green, the second one is the blue one, and third one is the yellow one. But whatever happens inside the black box, which we will not aware, so that is where the whole implementation lies. So what is the purpose of this communication? So what is the uh, use case? So here I'm trying to explain a very simple uh, pet store uh, application where uh, I'm leveraging the Swagger pet store uh, environment. So here, as you see in the screen, I have uh, two thread groups. One is create pet and another one is delete pet. So there are two different thread groups, not transactions, not any other element. It is two different thread groups in one single Jmeter test plan. The first thread group, it just create a pet. And second thread group, it will delete the pet whatever it has created before. So in this case, I'm leveraging inter-thread communication post-processor and inter-thread communication pre-processor. Under the create pet request, I am extracting the pet ID and then I'm storing it in some variable or some queue and I'm making use of whatever the pet ID got created in the subsequent delete pet third group. So whatever it creates, it will just get deletes in the delete pet third group. So here, how we can pass the pet ID and how we can leverage the inter -third communication, which we are going to see it in a demo section. Before that, how to leverage this particular inter -thread elements. So there are two ways you can implement. One is using the elements where you uh, right click on the element and then you go to add and you will just add it uh, like a typical uh, any other element in Jmeter. So here we have two different types of elements, post processor and pre processor. So only these two are available. But if you are not comfortable in using the elements, of course you can leverage the functions. So there are to totally uh, four different functions available for the interthread. One is FIFO put, FIFO get, FIFO pop, and FIFO size. So FIFO stands for first in, first out, and put. This function will uh, put a value to the queue, and get function will read a value from the queue, but uh, it does not wait. If there is no uh, value found in the queue, then it will just uh, throw an error or it will go to next step. FIFO pop. So this one, it will uh, gets the value from the queue and removes it from the queue itself. So it will not uh, store the value. Basically, the, the value will be popped out from the uh, queue size. And FIFO size, it will just return the number of items in the queue. So if you go to functions, uh, function helper in Jmeter, you can see all these four functions. And you have to just pass a name uh, the only thing is you have to um, mention the FIFO queue name and optionally you can enter the uh, name of the variable to store the result. So what are the differences between these functions and plugins? So whenever you use a function, the queues, the value inside the queues will not be cleared automatically. You have to clear it. Otherwise what will happen is it will uh, show up in your next ex execution. And the queues will be cleared only after the first FIFO put. So whenever uh, it uh, encounters FIFO put, then only the queues will get be uh, will get cleared. 
So that is why you have to generate a random uh, unique uh, queue name every time so that uh, you will not be reusing the queue name again and again uh, just to avoid the conflicts. And if you use the plugin, the advantage is it will automatically clears whenever the test starts and whenever the test stops. So no need to do anything with respect to your queue name. So if you are using the plugin, you can use whatever the queue name, you can use repeat the queue name whenever you want in the test plan. So these are the two different uh, points you have to make a note. So functions, the queues will not get cleared automatically. You have to use a unique queue name and plugins just uh, forget, uh, fire and forget. So no need to do anything if you are using the plugins. So plugin means uh, you, wherever you right click and add the element. So that is the plugins uh, in this context. Okay, now let us see a quick demo about uh, how we can achieve the communication between two thread groups. As we discussed, I have created two thread groups. One is create pet, which just creates a pet. As you see, I am just leveraging the petstore.swagger.io and uh, this is the post request where I am passing the body data. So you, it will generate a unique uh, ID and then it will just uh, create the pet. And it will uh, give you the pet ID, which uh, I have, I'm extracting using the JSON extractor. And in the second third group, I am just deleting the pet ID, whatever I have created before. So now uh, let me disable these two processor. And let me disable the uh, delete pet also. Let me execute this. Just a create pet request just to show what is the output. So this particular request just created a new pet. The ID is 3152. So we have to extract it, which we have already done using the JSON extractor. Now I have to store this particular result. So how do we store this value into the queue? So that is where the interthread communication post processor comes into picture. So now if, if you enable this post processor, you will get two options. One is you have to give a name. This is the default name where the data will be, the queue will be created. And this is the value I am adding it to the queue. So extract underscore pet ID. So this one comes from the JSON extractor. Next, I am going to enable the delete pet. So delete pet the group, it just deletes the pet ID which we have created earlier. So here you can see the path is pet ID. So where this pet ID comes using this preprocessor. So this preprocessor, what it will do is it will just read the value from the queue which we have created in the create pet request. So in the create pet request, we have created a queue sync underscore FIFO. So that is where I am uh, reusing it here and the variable name to store data. So it will just read and then it will store it inside this pet ID variable. So this pet ID, I'm going to leverage in the delete pet request. So now I am enabling all the elements. And now if you see the third test plan, there is a option where you can run the thread groups consecutively one at a time or concurrently. So I'm going to use consecutively so that uh, one, the create pet will create and then it will go to the next thread group. So I'm going to check this box. And I'm going to uh, run the whole test plan. So here what happens is, first it creates the pet ID using uh, the output is uh, 3075. Now if you see the delete pet request, you can see the same ID 3075. So which means the pet has been created and the value has been stored in the queue and the value is getting uh, read by this particular uh, preprocessor and then it is passing in the delete request. Okay, now what happens, if I increase the loop count to 10 here, again, delete pet also 10 here. So there are totally 10 pets will be created and 10 pets will be deleted. So let us see how it works here. So first it will execute 10 request and another 10 request. The first 10 is for the create and second 10 is for delete. 
if you click on the first create pet request you can see the id 5077 if you click the delete pet request the first delete pet request again you can see 5077 which means the communication between two third groups is working fine so this third group is just put the value and this element will just uh, read the value from the queue i hope uh, it is pretty easy to understand so just to uh, show you the uh, function capabilities what i am going to do is i'm going to leverage some of the functions so i'm going to tools uh, function helper dialog and if you just scroll down you can see all the four uh, v4 related functions v4 get pop put size so i'm going to uh, click on the v4 uh, size so here I'm going to enter my uh, queue name, which is uh, sync underscore uh, FIFO. And I'm going to click on generate and copy to clipboard. So this will give you the uh, queue size. So let us see what is the queue size I'm getting in a runtime. So here I'm going to add a dummy sampler. I'm going to put it uh, just above the delete pet request. I'm going to paste the function which I have just copied from the function helper. So now let us clear this and run this. So now you can see the size of the queue is 10 and it is deleting it. So deleting uh, again the value has been read and then that's it it's gone. Now the size has been reduced to 9 again it is getting the value uh, reading the value delete and 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there are totally, it started with 10 size and ended with 1. So basically it is the FIFO uh, size function is giving the size of the queue. Like this, you can leverage the other three functions. So it is very, uh, very simple. FIFO get, it will just uh, get the value from the queue. FIFO pop, it will just get the value and it will remove the item. FIFO put, it will just add the value to the queue now let us add a value in the runtime using the fifo put function so here we have to enter the queue name which we have used in the jmeter test plan so it would be sync underscore uh, fifo and the string value to put into fifo queue so you have to enter some string let us say uh, overwrite string something like that whatever the string you want to add just add it and click on generate and copy to clipboard and go to uh, create pet and add a dummy sampler and just paste it here so now this sync fifo queue uh, will have the value overwrite underscore overwrite a string and now let us uh, execute okay now as you see the first is uh, 5069 which is coming from this particular request but if you go see the second pet request it is saying input string for overwrite string because we have added the value in this particular request so basically it is overwriting the uh, uh, string to the queue and it is uh, passing along in the subsequent request so in this case it will it will fail basically because it is expecting a number we are sending a string so it is failing so this is this is how you just uh, mess up the uh, your queue with the string in some cases you might want to overwrite so this is the uh, function you will use so similarly you can uh, play around with a get and pop so pop just removes uh, read and removes the item from the queue so this particular inter thread communication will be very helpful uh, in your cases where if you want to talk or if you want to pass the values between the third groups definitely it will be very helpful that's it guys for my side if you have any questions please let me know in the comments and please uh, feel free to join my qa insights community thanks for watching have a good day if you like my dad's videos please subscribe to qa insights channel